Uh, hello everyone, uh, I'm Deepak and today I'm going to discuss about uh, my facial recognition project. Uh, as you can see the title, uh, my facial recognition project uses uh, local binary patterns uh, and independent component analysis uh, as the holistic methods or algorithms. So as you can see, uh, initially the contents of my uh, presentation are uh, introduction uh, where I talk about machine learning. Uh, uh, PCA where I talk about Princeton Component Analysis Algorithm uh, and then uh, the differences between ICA and PCA and why I choose uh, you know ICA for my project. Uh, later we'll go into the ICA algorithm uh, then the local binary pattern algorithm uh, the results obtained when uh, you know ICA and LBP are applied to a data set of images and the analysis of uh, which fade better uh, for uh, you know the machine learning problem we ran into so yeah here we go uh, the introduction is mainly about machine learning supervised learning and unsupervised learning so as we can see here the machine learning is uh, mainly divided into three types uh, you know three different types uh, one of them is unsupervised learning uh, where uh, the machine have to know how to do or uh, how to extract a certain amount of data from you know, that the test data without any previous uh, learning. Uh, you know, this is uh, the point where uh, you teach the machine uh, what to do and uh, we don't let it know how to do it. So that's called unsupervised learning. Uh, it has only the test data in it. Uh, the difference between unsupervised and supervised is uh, in supervised learning we have uh, two types of data. Uh, one of them is the test data and the other is the trained data. Initially when trained data is given, uh, we also gave the expected results or labels to it so that uh, it can figure out the weight vectors from it and you know, uh, compare the test data to the weight vectors and uh, extract the features from it. So that's how facial deconstruction is done in supervised learning and as we know unsupervised learning is more complex and supervised learning is relatively less complex and semi-supervised learning uh, is basically somewhere in between supervised and uh, unsupervised learning but we are not going to deal with it right now so let's move forward and as you know the principal component analysis uh, is the basis or you know the basic algorithm for uh, any facial recognition project so as you can see, uh, there is a oval uh, set of data here, or uh, you know, any shape uh, which you like to see here. Uh, so any data set, uh, the principal component analysis uh, tries to figure out the maximum uh, variance line, uh, so that uh, you know you could rep represent any single element in the data with that maximum variance line. Uh, uh, it basically means the equation of the line quantizes the data entire data in the uh, data set uh, as you can see the horizontal lines represents the you know maximum variance and minimum variance lines so any data that is placed in between these two uh, is the data in the data set or you know is the data that is represented in the data set so uh, as you already know PCA always maximizes variance so now let's, now let's move forward to differences between PCA and ICA so uh, initially we could talk about the mutual orthogonality uh, orthogonality is a property of a matrix as you already know uh, it is basically means that the direction even the direction of the matrix is changed the outputs can be so uh, the only algorithm that supports the mutual orthogonality property is the PCA uh, so basically the uh, you know the eigenvector matrix or any you know weighted vector matrix uh, and its transpose are equal uh, when a principal component analysis is used as an, al is, as an algorithm. So that's not the case with independent component analysis. It gives two different results for the transpose matrix and the actual matrix. And this is a great property to you know exploit because uh, we need um, uh, you know two different answers for uh, two different directions of data. Uh, and coming to the mutual independency, as you can already mm, see from the uh, you know, independent component analysis. There is independence in it. So uh, we know that uh, it tries to attract, extract features uh, that are unique to the uh, the only image, and it does not try to find the maximum variance as such. So as you can see, PCA supports maximum variance. ICA doesn't. But 
PCA tries to find independent features out of uh, image and uh, sorry, uh, ICA is supposed to find uh, independent features from set of images and PCA doesn't. So uh, this makes ICA a uh, better choice when we are considering uh, you know different data sets of images uh, which are uh, pretty closely placed to each other because unique properties are hard to find for PCA so uh, that's an advantage ICA has over PCA uh, and as you can see the, there is also a uh, maximum mutual, informa uh, maximum, uh, mutual information uh, transfer bet uh, between images in ICA this is where it tries to find a correlation out of unique features because that's how any algorithm should do to you know create a final facial reconstruct so these are the main differences between PCA and ICA. Now let's move forward to what ICA does. So as you can see here, uh, it's a cocktail party problem uh, explained by independent component analysis. So as we can see, uh, the there are three different uh, musical sources that are given as inputs to a microphone. So these are three uh, musical instruments which are uh, closely, uh, you know, which have same properties with each other. and it, uh, it is hard to find a unique feature in them uh, and only ICA can solve this problem uh, because it always try, uh, tries to uh, you know extract the unique features uh, from a source so uh, the discrete uh, outputs are uh, you know a guitar a piano and a saxophone uh, so it is the only algorithm which can find a discrete property from a given set of you know closely spaced or closely matched uh, sources so the only difference between uh, this um, you know slide and the actual project is the images are uh, you know sorry the inputs are images instead of sound sources so let's move on to what my code does so as you can see uh, we can select an image and uh, put it into our you know initial database and then compare uh, the uh, actual test data with the data set so that it could figure out what uh, face, face uh, it, it is matched with so let's see so as you can see there are two images uh, the image on the left one uh, is the initial image which is placed in the data set 2 and then uh, the right one is a different image uh, which we can see if we see it closely there are two discrete images uh, and the second image is matched with the first one as you can see the ICA computation is in progress and the recognized ID is 2 and the score is 0 0.87899 which means the ICA uh, algorithm is highly accurate uh, for at least uh, you know constrained images so when we move to what local binary patterns does, as you already know, local binary patterns try to uh, divide a uh, image into a sort of unit pixels uh, in the center of the uh, you know uh, the uh, square uh, is considered as a binary zero, and the extreme right or extremes are considered as one, and every change in between them is considered a change in grayscale. So as you can see here, uh, the input image uh, is converted into LBP image. Uh, which is basically binary numbers or a binary pattern and the binary pattern like uh, zeros and ones so the grayscale looks as the follows mm. so this image is the input of our LBP or uh, initial input uh, which is placed into a database and then we give our test data to it so that it could recognize what it face uh, is closely matched with so as you can see the result here the recognized ID two because the data set is two uh, and the distance between the actual image uh, and the uh, test data is 301 so that is closely matched uh, so that's how accurate our local binary pattern is now as you can see the analysis uh, initially the analysis for uh, unconstrained images uh, here ICA is far better than LBP uh, you know weighted so that means ICA fared better than LBP uh, local binary pattern uh, when the data set is unconstrained images uh, similarly when we try to do with constrained images uh, LBP uh, does fare better than ICA as we already know because LBP is texture recognition algorithm and no texture is uh, you know constrained so uh, that is uh, a good finding from this project uh, when we come to the conclusion 
uh, as we already uh, suggested back, uh, about our formation ICA uh, can do better with constrained images and LBB can do better with unconstrained images so uh, our aim or uh, future work should be done in such a way that uh, you know we can use both and find optimal results because we cannot expect our uh, input data set to be you know constrained all the time so now just let's just move on to the code so as we can see that uh, here uh, initially we'll test what ICA does as we can see I'm typing in the form uh, you know the, uh, the file which we have to run as you can see uh, it asks asks us to select an image there so that we could put it into a data set so I'm selecting an image let's say you know set to uh, yeah so we are setting the first image into the data set too Uh, so as we can add uh, this data set uh, the image into the data set too uh, and now uh, we can check if the next image is you know closely f uh, recognizing the face or not so anything in the data set too let's check a seven. Oh yeah so uh, this should probably be matched to the first image yeah as you can see here uh, the image 1 and 7 are matched with each other so the score is 1 because that's the uh, technically the difference between uh, 1 and 7 in terms of feature extraction so uh, the recognized ID is 2 that's the ID of your data, data set uh, you know while using ICA as your algorithm so now let's just test out uh, what uh, what LBP does so let's go and test what our LBP does. So as we can see here, this is the LBP algorithm. Uh, yeah. So we are in here. Uh, now we can run. The, we can do the same thing or uh, run the file. So yeah. So it asks us uh, the same thing. It asks us to select an image uh, so that we can test our uh, actual image to it and then find the correlation between them. Uh, so when try to set the data so let's say our data is uh, D1 uh, yeah so this is your LBP image as I showed you in the presentation and let's add this image to uh, data set let's say 2 okay L, so yeah now select the image that we need uh, to be compared or to be tested uh, and yeah so that should be a D right uh, yeah so let's do a D00 so yeah this is a different image to the previously selected one right uh, even then uh, the face is same the facial expressions are different so uh, the our facial recognition program should be able to find out that let's see yeah so as you can see the recognized ID is one uh, that means uh, our image is been recognized uh, as in the set data set one or, or the data set two uh, and the distance is 138 between them because as you can see there are different uh, features or uh, you know there is a change or difference in discrete features of the same person so the distance is 138 that means there are two of the same image uh, but the distance between them is 138 so yeah our uh, both the LBP and uh, ICA are working so uh, as you can see uh, that's the output of uh, my project uh, both uh, local binary pattern and independent component analysis are uh, working fine uh, let's check uh, if there is another image we can check yeah so our LBP the data Let's see if it is working or not. So let's see. Oh, that is a good one. Now let's select this into a. Okay, there is a. So uh, our database is already full, so we cannot select another image. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's that's it for today. So our project is working, uh, and we figured out that as I showed you already in, in the analysis. Uh, for unconstrained images the uh, ICA is working fine uh, but when when it comes to uh, you know 
constrained Im uh, or unconstrained images, uh, the one with uh, different expressions or uh, different angles, LBP works better because uh, it's a better, uh, you know, texture recognition program. Obviously, it does. Sh it should work better for, uh, you know, uh, an unconstrained facial recognition program. So that's a conclusion. So, thank you.